Greetings, everybody, and welcome back to a brand new episode of some Bong Geek Talks About with me, your host, the name Stevens, Henry Stevens. Everybody, how'd you do? Hope you're all well. Hope you're enjoying a good Bond film, a good Bond book, a good Bond video game, a good James Bond, whatever makes you part of this glorious fandom. I hope you're enjoying it, and welcome to the some Bong Geek Talks About community here, everybody, because today we're going to talk about potentially unlucky number 13 James Bond film. Though, I have to be honest, 13 is a lucky number for me, so let's see if it is for James Bond. It is, of course, the film Octopussy, a film really a lot of people have been talking about recently online, really getting a bit of a resurgence, so I feel really excited to talk about this film right here and now. And obviously, as well, this was the film that competed with Never Say Never Again and eventually won and showed that um, it's not just one element um, that makes the James Bond series. So it's a bit of a win already in advance for that. But before we get into the uh, film and my personal connection with everybody, can we just do, if you will, let me just do my little bit of house cleaning as always. Can I ask everybody, please like and comment on the video. I love hearing your thoughts and opinions as well on these films and what you think about my opinions. I love commenting, starting up conversations. It's one of the reasons why I do this channel. Don't forget as well, everybody, if you like this video and any other videos on the side, please don't forget to give us a uh, subscribe click and don't forget also to click the notification bell icon see so future updates and videos right everybody so that's just you know house cleans all out of the way let's talk about oxy and um my general thoughts are it's it's an okay film it's it's one of those films i sort of enjoy when i can just put on it's like a nice sunday afternoon i've either got a nice beer in my hand drink responsibly or a nice coffee in the afternoon and i can just sit back relax and enjoy it's not very taxing it's just one of those films you know it's just very relaxing and just put it on heck i could be doing something else in the background you know in the foreground you're know, maybe doing some ironing or washing or something on my laptop like writing and i could just have it on and just enjoy it while also doing something else it's a very nice relaxing film i think to um sit and watch but that's just my initial thoughts, everybody. We're going to go into this in a bit more detail when it comes to Octopussy. But let's talk about my personal history of um, Octopussy because I have a lot of personal history with this one. And one story comes to mind I really want to share with everybody. And I'm sure you all had stories like this before. But um, I just remember this. I think I saw Octopussy. I think it was like a Saturday. Um, I think it started like, ooh, like five o'clock in the afternoon. I think it went all the way to nine o'clock in the evening. And I remember I just started watching it because obviously it was a new Bond film. I hadn't seen it before. And I think my brother eventually started and joined in. And I think my sister started to watch it and my parents started watching. And just eventually we all just sat in the TV room eventually and just started all watching it together. And that for me is one of the happiest memories I have of any sort of James Bond experience I have. Just all my family finally coming together and watching this um, one film. And do you know what really made it special? I know that sounds silly, but you might know what I mean. Um, normally, obviously, when it's, you know, supper time, you know, you stop watching, whatever, and go and have supper. My parents allowed us, and they brought in their own, brought all suppers into the television room so we could carry on watching the film, literally through the course of one advert break. Um, because in those days, no, they still do it now. Sometimes in long films, they had to have a news break, and they obviously, um, you know, reporting the news. My father literally grabbed supper, put it on trays, brought it into the TV room for us, and we all just sat and watched the rest of Octopussy, while having our supper. It was glorious. I'll always remember this. I have very happy memory. And I also have very happy memories watching this film with my grandfather. For those of you who are new to the channel, let me explain. I, w I grew up watching a lot of Bond films with my uh, grandfather a lot. And um, Octopussy was one he enjoyed. I don't think it was one of his like top favourites. I think even he was saying he felt Roger was looking a bit too old at this point. And we will get into that a bit later. But um, he liked India um he liked the train bit which we'll definitely get to later but you know it's just one of those films we just put on and enjoy that was the thing that's really it's just a nice lazy bond film to watch but that being said there is um some bad points to the film and the number one bad point for me is i think the villains are quite weak um let's start with um gerald oromoff um he is he is an all right villain i mean obviously his intention is to sort of light up the cold war you know um put a nuclear bomb in an American air base, and then suddenly he will shout like this for dramatic effect. Um, obviously, that is Stephen Burkos. I, I swear that's his signature, but I've never really found him that engaging or interesting. It's sort of like... He, Gerald Ormoff always fell in, for me, with like those bog-standard evil Russian characters you used to see in the movies at the time. Just n nothing really great or special about him that much. I think the film tries to make him a bit of a bigger deal, but it just doesn't work. And um, 
the other the other villain I'm not really a fan of is um, Louis Jordan's um, great actor, by the way, uh, Kamal Khan. Um, just purely for this reason, everybody. When I my particular choice and my preference to Bond villains is I let them to be a bit of a bit of a threat, a bit of bit of menace to them. Um, you know, even the most subdued ones, I think, up to this point, have had a bit of menace. I mean, Francisco Caramanga, even though it was very elegant and charming, had a slight menace to him. Strongbird Dig, Drax, Christatos even, even though I wasn't a fan of Christatos, had a bit of a menace to him. Um, Louis Jordan's um, Kamal Khan, I find he's very, just armchair friendly and just very relaxed. It's just, it's not really, I don't really find he's a, a much of a good evil villain. Um, he doesn't really rank highly, but he does have that amazing line after the safari, which I'm going to try and imitate here, but Mr. Bond is indeed a very rare breed, soon to be extinct. Um, and he does say, and Louis Jordan's voice is so beautiful and so just delicate, and it's so rich. I love hearing when he does speak, but, you know, just overall, Kamal Khan is just not really really one of my favorite villains and just it just doesn't fire on the right cylinders for me um another thing is um what the other big problem i have with octopusy and really is the storylines i don't think merge because like in four eyes only you had the attack story and the melina Havelock revenge story and i felt they perfectly sort of intertwined with each other um in octopusy i find it starts off with the fabergé egg and it all eventually just gets forgotten about that and got rid of. And then it goes into the nuclear bomb story. They don't really intertwine that well. And I think that's uh, one reason why, actually, I think the film suffers. It just, you know, the stories don't really connect. Or they don't merge from one or seamlessly go into the next, in my opinion. It just doesn't work for me at all. And, of course, we're going to have to talk about here. But it's the Bond, Bond, Bond of the jungle, strong as he can be. Oh, watch out for that tree. Um, yes, the whole bit of uh, James Bond going, um, you know, going to the tiger, sit, um, you know, stuff like that. It's just, uh, I think that's Moonraker level cringe. But, um, you know, even as a kid, I was like, oh my God, this is so bad. But I was laughing my head off and probably, to be honest, still to this day. I look at it and laugh, thinking it's still awful, but I'm sorry, I have to do it again. Bond, Bond, Bond of the jungle, strong as he can be. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't really a great moment. But there are some really good points in this film. Um, I have to say, the action sequences are really good. The pre-title sequence with the little jet is amazing, I have to say. Really, really excellently well done. A wonderful title sequence in uh, Cuba. Great bit of fun. Great bit of, um, you know, action, really well paced, great stunts work in it, just absolutely terrific. Um, you've also got, you know, obviously, you know, the um, sort of, you know, the tug-tug chase for Inja, which was really nice. You've got a few cool at um, fight sequences, which are really nice. But the glory, everybody, the utter glory and stupendous beauty and wonder of this film is the incredible train sequence. You know it was coming. I can't wait to talk about it. Here we go. Oh my God, this film's train sequence is amazing. It's the star of the movie and the highlight without a shadow of doubt, in my opinion. Bond is fighting on the side of the train, under the train, on top of the train, in the train. Just fantastic. Great pacing throughout it as well, without a shadow of doubt in my mind. And the train is used so well in this movie. Heck, the bit where Bond gets the Alfa Romeo and turns it into a bit of a train itself, chasing it, was really great fun as well. The cinematography for this whole chain sequence is amazing. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it again and say it loud and say it proud, everybody. When Bond is on a train, it's just, to quote Sir Ben Kingsley, I'm and Free, it's movie magic, love. It really is. And just, you know what? I've seen other train sequences in other films. It's still, I think Oxford still ranks the highest. I really do. They just make such great use of it. And it's so nail-biting as well. I love every moment that they're on Octopus's train in this film. It's so, so terrific. And I think the other massive highlight for me, I'm just going to really say it out now and proud, is I think India looks incredible in this film. Obviously, they've shown a certain side of India and, show, and not shown a certain side. But the architecture and the landscape that we see in it is just utterly beautiful. You are swept away, I think, when it comes to India, without a shadow of a doubt in my mind. Um, India certainly... Um, just so cinema the cinematography is just so fantastic it's iconic i think and it's used so well i love 
this film in Egypt. I'm surprised they haven't gone to India earlier in the series, if I'm absolutely honest. Okay, so then, you know, that's really my good points, my bad points. Let, let's discuss characters now. So let's start off as obviously our main man, which is uh, Roger Moore, James Bond. Um, now I think I. Let me put it this way. Four eyes only, he's signed to look his age a little bit, but I can I think he gets away with it perfectly. He was Roger Moore, I think, intended to leave after Four Eyes Only, but they brought him back because of Sean Connery doing Never Seen Ever Again. For the record, I think absolutely hundred percent the right move. Um so he's starting to look a bit older now, but what was great about this film is they do sort of play it to his age. They give him like a leading lady who's more age appropriate. The the way he does his action is more like age appropriate. Um, and it all just works in this film. They're taking his age into consideration in this film and not, you know, shying away from it, but at the same time just supporting him and giving him a new different style a bit to do. And it works really well. I think because of that, he still remains extremely believable in this film. I think it was about, oh, I think he's about 56 in this film. And I know 56-year-olds, even older, who can still handle themselves. So I, I think Roger Moore's still believable in this, thanks to the great story direction and style of characters they go with. Um, I've obviously spoken about the villains um, already, about Stephen Burkhoff and Louis Jordan. They're all really good. Um, the MI6 regulars. Obviously, this is the first one we've got our new M, Robert Brown. Obviously, some people wonder if he's Admiral Hargreaves from The Spy Who Loved Me. Um, I'm going to say this. I've always gone in the interpretation that this is meant to be the same M that Bernard uh, Lee played. And I, that's the way I see it. But if you want to see him as the guy from The Spy Who Loved Me, by all means. I can't deny as well. But he... Uh, Robert Brown gets a bit of a shunt when it comes to M's because he's not really particularly that memorable, but I think he was one of those people who always gave a solid, strong performance every single time. So I applaud Robert Brown for that. Desmond Lennon as Q, he he gets a really nice, cool, cool scene in India, some really good stuff in this film. I have to say, they start using Desmond Llewellyn a bit more now, which is really nice. Um, and obviously, we've got Money Penny, still as great as ever. Um, you know, just Lewis Maxwell's great. Um, obviously the second to last film, um, and she's still giving it 100%. So let's talk now about the uh, Bond ladies. You've got Magda, um, obviously is the secondary Bond girl. She's fantastic. Um, I need to see, again, more films with her, and I need to find some, but um, the character is really interesting. It's, it's sort of um, Catwoman-esque, if you know what I mean. She's like half good, half bad, sort of playing really for herself. Really interesting character. I love every time she's on screen. Um, one of the things that I think is really interesting about her is actually her loyalty really is, you think it's to maybe um, Kamal Khan, but it really is to Octopussy. And she plays that so well. But as to say, the main Bond girl and the title character, if you will, is Octopussy, played by the returning Maud Adams. Um... I think Octopussy is, if I'm honest, slightly wasted in this movie because they build her up really well. Then it obviously comes to reveal and you hear about her amazing backstory and what an interesting character this is. And it's really great. And obviously um, Bond and her really starting to fall for each other. There's a real strong positive connection there. It's really quite obvious and it's really cool to see. But then she sort of like disappears for the movie and then reappears sort of at the end. And um, I didn't really talk about this much when it comes to the negative points, but I think the film's ending really drags and is quite bad. You know, the bit of everything from the attack on Kamal's castle to the airplane, but at the end, it just, it feels like it's just, okay, that's the ending. No, this is the ending. This is the ending. And I think also, again, this film very strongly shows, and I keep saying this again, that this conception that Bond women are just dumb bimbos is completely false and especially shows in Octopussy we've got such talented strong powerful women which Bond fans we love to see and it stays strong here um the fact that I think um Octopussy needs um rescuing at the end is actually quite wrong in a weird way um but I think obviously it was the time when Bond needed to save people you've also got a henchman here Gabinda um Gabinda I have to say I thought was really good I think it's quite frightening actually as a kid um, really good um, henchman, very much carries on, I think, the strong tradition of good henchmen in the line of Jaws and Odd Job. Really, really well done here. So yeah, everybody, you know what? That's my thoughts on Octopussy. It's enjoyable, it's fun, it's very easy to watch. It's a nice film to watch on, like, on a relaxing Sunday afternoon, you know, with a drink. The characters, I think, for the most part, are okay. I'm not really too fussed about the villains that much. The action sequences are good for the most part, does drag a bit. The Bond of the Jungle bit is a bit annoying, and I don't think the plot is as good as what people say it is. But hey, that's just my thoughts, everybody. But I want to know, what are your thoughts about this film? Comment down below and tell me what you think. As always, everybody, my name's Henry Stevens, and this has been some Bond Geek Talks About. Goodbye. <laughs>